So here we are, Harrison busily turning up blanks for the gears. As you can tell we've done quite a lot so far. And there is the Rambaudi mill which has done all the prismatic stuff as they say. And here, oh there's a panther, but here is the hobber. So this has been assembled a bit roughly because we needed a 40 to 1 worm gear making, well worm and worm gear. And in order to do that, I decided the easiest way to do it was on the machine. And I happen to have this blue worm box that's 30 to 1, so usable but the wrong ratio, and also right-handed instead of left-handed. But we figured out by putting in a bit of an odd gear chain, we could A, set this thing up to do a 40 tooth gear, and B, cope with the fact it was the wrong way round, and it sort of runs, so if we turn it on, you can tell it's all a bit temporary with the clamps holding the thing down, but you can see the gears running. So that's the hob running in the background, which is geared down by standard Myford gears. And then the rest of these gears are all courtesy of John Wynn. Um, to save making the universal joints, I managed to find this shaft for a radio controlled car, which will do the job. And as you can tell, probably, it's gradually turning this shaft here, which the worm blank goes on to at the other end. Anyway, that'll do for now. We'll come back and give you some more with the blank installed and it doing the cutting. I thought we'd give you a view of the other side of the machine. You can see the hob blank, the gear blank that's set up there. As you can probably tell, it has to be counted round, canted round at an angle, which is the sum of the helix angle of the hob that's cutting it and the helix angle of the worm it's got to fit with. Uh, that's a lot of maths. We tried, and I think we got it right. You can see the hob there that's underneath. Uh, and as an interest, you can see the arbors and another blank. Two other hobs there. You get one hob for each size of gear. So that's a 16 DP that's on, sorry, a 20 DP that's on there. And those are 16 and I think 18 hobs there. Uh, and obviously this side, you've just got the reduction and dividing gear going on. So I'll get it set up and we'll see if it cuts. OK, let's see if we can actually cut a gear. So the first thing we do is to pull the down feed on, because cutting worm gears is a bit different to ordinary gears, in as much as with a straight spur gear you feed the blank across the hob. But with a worm gear you feed it down. So you can just see that's just starting to put the first smidgen of a cut on. And you can see it's a helical gear, as we said, because what we're trying to do is uh, match, match a worm gear. And also you can see it's cutting a bit more to one side than the other, so I think I just need to pull this across a bit. It looks like the hob's turning counterclockwise, but it isn't. That's just the effect of the video. So we'll put a little bit more feed on. You can hear the hob starting to cut as we do. And we'll see if we wind up with a plausible 40 tooth gear. See you later. Well, here we are about half an hour in. And as you can probably see, if I zoom a bit, we're starting to produce something that looks like a worm wheel. The thing we've discovered is that mostly the machines try to shake itself apart. So all sorts of things have come loose 
and I've had to tighten the jib, jib strips up quite a lot to get rid of some lost movement and also the thrusts on the lead screws. There aren't thrust bearings which is maybe a problem um, but if I put a bit of feed on you'll see the net effect of all the load. You can probably see that the vertical slide is moving a bit but we're going to stick with it until we've done and then we're going to take it apart and see what we can do about getting all of the looseness out of it and maybe changing some of the bolts to hold things a bit better but you know it works a bit so there we go a finished worm wheel as you can see it's really a helical gear because the teeth are not quite square on it but it's 20 dp because it actually meshes with this myford change wheel but probably you can see it only meshes with it when they're at an angle which is because it's a helical gear but either way it should do its job as a worm wheel which will be the last bit of the hobby machine but we're definitely going to have to go through it and find ways of getting rid of all the backlash and dealing with all the thrust faces and taking all the slack out of the jibs while still allowing it to move um, but there you go out of interest this was the very first one we tried to make and I couldn't quite understand what was going on but it has got 40 teeth exactly like this it's just that it's so small that you're only seeing the root the actual blank was too small and you have to adjust the size of a blank of a helical gear in order to allow for the fact the teeth aren't square. Horribly complicated maths, but fortunately we've got Ivan Law's book and it tells us how to do this. So now we've all got to do is to make the matching worm and then we'll be in business. Thanks very much to Mr Wynn for the gears. Take care.